Hi everyone and thanks for joining me today. So there are a number of good reasons to keep your fingernails short when playing the cello uh, as well as a number of other instruments like the violin, the viola, uh, piano and uh, a number of others. Uh, at least two reasons come to mind. One is that by keeping them short it enables you to have a, a better finger uh, shape and finger position and giving you more strength and more uh, durability for lack of a better word. Uh, another reason is that when they're in a good shape like that then the fingers will not interfere with some of the other strings that are on the instrument and you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. So I have yet to encounter any students whose fingernails are quite as bad as any of those shown in the uh, in the opening sequence of this video with one exception, of course, but uh, that's another story for another time. Now for the purposes of this video, I have specifically let my fingernails grow too long. Um, I will say for the past couple of weeks, it's not been a lot of fun to play the cello, uh, but I think it's important to demonstrate what's going on. Okay, so now my fingernails are too long. Now. I hope that it's possible to see on this video. What I'd really prefer to do is to have my fingers further forward this way. You see I'm trying to go this way, but my fingernails are interfering. They're hitting the fingerboard. Obviously, if they were longer, then I would be having even that much more trouble. Okay, so as a result, my, finger, my fingers are forced to, here, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. So instead of being like this, and I'm holding the cello out of position for the purposes of this video, so don't worry about my arm position. All right, so instead of being like this, my fingers are forced to be more like this, okay? So as a result, it's hard to get that good um, counter pressure that you would need from your, th from your thumb, and, and your fingers just aren't positioned properly. In addition, when they tilt this way, the backs of my fingers are more likely to interfere with the higher strings. For example, if I'm working on, say, here, and, and again, I'm tilting uh, things out of position for the purposes of this video. So if I'm working on the D string, okay, and my fingers have to be tilted back to make uh, space for the fingernails, then the backs of the fingers are now interfering with the A string. So if I have any kind of intricate fingering going on, that's going to be impossible to do because the fingers are interfering with the adjacent string. <clears throat> okay, so what happens after we've trimmed the fingernails down to where they need to be? I will say that it is a distinct pleasure to get these down to where they belong. Okay, we're getting there. And I will take care of my right hand when I'm done with this video. Okay, that should suffice for the time being. Okay, so my freshly trimmed fingernails, they feel much better and you can see that it's now going to be much easier to do what I need to do. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so now I can go into what I, what I might call a higher position. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so now I can bring my fingers all the way forward if need be for much better strength, much better uh, stability in position work, and also um, 
essentially complete lack of interference with adjacent strings. So again, now that if, if I have any intricate fingering that needs doing, then no problem at all. So I hope that this will motivate you to help remember to keep those fingernails short. So how short should you keep your fingernails? Well, I generally say to students, cut them as short as you can without hurting yourself. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. You can leave a comment on this video, or if you prefer, you can visit my website, which is shown below on this screen. Thanks again for joining me today, and I hope to see you again next time.